One company that's been a big supporter of Delta Lake and the Lake House is Atlassian. And that's why I'm really happy, happy to welcome Rohan Dupelia, the data platform leader at Atlassian, who's going to give us some insights in how, to, in how the Lake House has impacted their organization. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. I'm Rowan Depelia, and I lead the analytics platform team at Atlassian. And now I've been at Atlassian for over six years, and I've been fortunate enough to witness a large portion of their data journey over this time. Before I get started, I'll just share a little bit about Atlassian for those of you who aren't aware. Now, we were founded over 19 years ago in Sydney, Australia, and that's where I'm calling in from today. And we now have offices globally with over 5,000 employees. And we're serious about creating products and practices that encourage open work and collaboration for all teams. And we do this with tools such as Confluence, which is a system that helps teams create and share content, Bitbucket, which gives dev teams one place to plan with projects, collaborate on code and test and deploy, and Jira, our flagship product, which is used for bug tracking, issue tracking and project management. Also just a little bit about our data landscape, so we've managed to consolidate all of our data use cases into one single data lake house powered by Databricks. We operate at a petabyte scale, ingesting over 25 terabytes of data per day, which comes with its own host of problems, probably worth diving into in another talk. We have around 3,000 monthly internal active users on the platform, and that's of the 5,000 uh, employees in the company. So more than half the company uses it on a monthly basis. And these people range from dev teams to researchers to support analysts. And what's more interesting here is that we have only around 200 data workers in the company. So that's folks whose primary job is to look at and deal with data. So the reason I think that this is so interesting is that because we've managed to build something that can support the vast number of casual users on the, across the company, while also still catering to the very specialized data users as well. Now the lake house is used by all parts of the company. And what I guess is most interesting here is that the audience as well varies in terms of persona. So in one extreme, we have data scientists who are building out ML models and notebooks to best determine the routing of support tickets to the most relevant support engineer. And on the other extreme, we have business users in HR and talent acquisition logging into Tableau, consuming dashboards, and tracking the full journey of candidates through from referral to joining to their tenure at Atlassian. And both of these use cases at their base are using the same data catalog, the same data stores, essentially the same lake house. So let's go back to the beginning of our journey and, where, and how we got here. And I like to imagine that there is a sliding scale between a data warehouse style architecture and a data lake style architecture with the lake house being that sweet spot in the middle where you get the best of both worlds. And then in the beginning, at Atlassian, we're very much at the data warehouse end of the spectrum. In fact, we had two distinct data warehouses designed with very different purposes in mind. We had our Postgres data warehouse, which was ultimately used as an enterprise data warehouse, powering our business intelligence and dashboarding needs across the company. Our uh, users of this were typically finance, support, marketing, and other enterprise needs. We then had our Redshift data warehouse, which is used primarily to power our research and development. It was here that we, we shipped all of our clickstream uh, data from our products and used notebooks and SQL analytics to understand the user journey and patterns for our products. Unfortunately, this came at a cost for us and there were several challenges. Primarily, we noticed that a large number of data sets were typically being copied across from one data warehouse to another. These copies were brittle and often added delays to downstream pipelines and analysis. We faced several other problems with this data warehouse architecture as well. For one, there were differing syntaxes between the two data warehouses, which caused heartache for an analyst and using both systems and trying to convert queries between the two. Secondly, we're hitting concurrency issues. And Atlassian at this point in time was going through a period of hyper growth. And the queries hitting these two data warehouses was causing us to do regular upgrades to the infrastructure. Lastly, there was a cost of pooling data from these two data warehouses together. And as a result, a lot of analysis just didn't happen because the engineering tax was just way too high. It was at this point that we 
decided to reevaluate our architecture and what we're trying to achieve out of it. We knew that daily volume was going to be growing exponentially, and we wanted some, to build something that would scale well with Atlassian. It was also this point back in 2016, there were, there were plenty of examples of S3 data lakes being blogged about and discussed in the data community. And following these examples, we decided to take the leap and combine both of our data warehouses into one data lake style architecture. And what we essentially built was an S3-based data lake and used Hive and Presto on EC2 and EMR to serve up data for various use cases. And the beauty of this was that we now had all, the, all of our data in one place, and this meant that there was less engineering tax in copying data from one store to another for any sort of analysis. This architecture was also infinitely scalable. We could always add more clusters or add more data to S3 without having to really re-architect our infrastructure. Unfortunately, performance was not on par with what we had in the data warehouse. We could manage to get relatively good concurrency with Presto, but smaller queries were still not returning as fast as they did in the data warehouse architecture. Also, modeling data for dashboards and BI use cases was quite difficult Performing updates often meant rewriting entire tables or partitions, and we couldn't just run a simple update commands like we used to in the data warehouse. And lastly, there was a higher barrier to entry for data analytics and science use cases. Our data platform team, my team, was becoming the bottleneck for users wanting to do anything advanced on the platform. Often with users having to ask us to add them, uh, create them a cluster or add particular libraries to their cluster. It was at this point back in 2018 that we discovered Databricks. And even though the lake house paradigm wasn't really a thing back then, adding Databricks moved us closer to that Nirvana state. And in the grand scheme of things, not much actually changed when we added Databricks. We were still able to keep all of our data in our own S3 buckets and we'll still able to use AWS, the AWS Glue data catalog to store all of our table definitions. What did change, however, was the experience that Databricks added on top of the data lake, which brought us closer to that lake house architecture. We were now able to perform queries much faster, thanks in part due to Databricks' optimized runtimes, but also as a result of the optimizations that came with converting tables to, Delta Lake form, to the Delta Lake format. This meant an improved experience for business intelligence style use cases. In recent months, we've also been fortunate enough, enough to trial Databricks SQL, and we see that this will further improve the slice and dice experience for our users. Delta Lake also allowed us to bring back database style commands such as updates, deletes, and merge statements without having to really worry about the complexity of managing files in S3. We could essentially start treating a data lake like a database by this point. And perhaps the most unexpected outcome for us was that our analytics platform team was no longer the bottleneck for any sort of um, data analysis or science use cases across the company. We could essentially just give our users a cluster and they could be completely autonomous to configure it, configure it to their needs. Lastly, with Databricks, we remain on an open source platform, which has two major benefits for us. For one, we're able to spin up compute outside of Databricks to achieve whatever we need, given that data still resides in our own S3 buckets and in an open source Delta Lake format. And secondly, we're able to take advantages of the innovations that are happening today in the data community, in the data space. Now, this is all really exciting, but what's more exciting is the impact that the Data Lake Lakehouse has had on our business. To start, we've seen a large cost reduction when compared with both the warehouse and Data Lake architectures. As an example, with all storage on cheap S3, we aren't paying to keep disks warm when data isn't being accessed as frequently. But also thanks to the highly optimized Spark runtimes, our pipelines are ultimately quicker and take up less CPU time. Secondly, our data engineering team can be more focused as there is only really one platform to work on. This ultimately means less context switching for them 
and to narrow a job profile to search for when looking for new hires. We also felt that data governance has been made significantly easier as there is ultimately just one thing now to secure and apply controls to. And lastly, our data scientists, analysts, and engineers are ultimately more autonomous. We've essentially handed the keys over to them and let them be free to discover the platform on their own. And this in itself has been a significant accelerant towards innovation within the company. Now, I believe we're getting super close to hitting that Nirvana lakehouse architecture state. And I feel that Databricks will help us get there faster. Some of the most exciting things that we're doing in the coming months are moving more BI style workloads towards the Databricks SQL endpoints. Being a relatively new feature, we are yet to really move everything across just yet. We're also planning on moving more tables towards Delta Lake to, to further improve their performance, but also to simplify workloads that need strong dimensional modeling. And lastly, we're looking at ways that we can enable more sensitive use cases by using Amuda, which is a self-service data access and privacy control layer on top of our data lake house. So to recap, we at Atlassian have proven that there is no longer a need for two separate data things. Technology has advanced far enough for us to consider one single unified lake house architecture. Secondly, we believe that the Databricks platform has the capabilities to make this convergence of warehouse and lake even more possible right now. And lastly, we've been successful in this move towards this lake house architecture by essentially handing over the keys to our teams and letting them be free to explore, make mistakes, and essentially be fully autonomous. And I personally feel that this is one of the first steps to really winning with the lake house architecture. Some final uh, words before I finish up. Firstly, we're hiring data roles in the US, Australia, and India. So you can check out our site for any upcoming opportunities. And secondly, we have other talks happening during the Data and AI Summit. Uh, you can check out Isha and Richa's talk on Wednesday at 5 p.m. PST, discussing how they've built scalable data pipelines using Databricks. Thanks for listening, everyone.